watching from Ireland Green is still from wheat and rye Be away with your pills and the cure all ills Be a pagan Christian or Jew Take off your coat and grease your throat With a back full of mountain dew I, I love doing this project, so uh, it's progressive quite rapidly. Um, so I love that it's kind of a very new technology. I love learning about all these new things that are coming out. As I was doing my project, there was more things coming out at different IO events and stuff like that, and I could invent those in my project. So, yeah, I think the technology which was a few years ago, would you think it's a very exciting for your community? Yes, definitely. I think this is a great example of how comedy can modernize. So I think a lot of places could benefit from having a new app today and then take a more fake website that takes away the need for a next app. No. So, if you were to redo it again, would you change anything? Would you change the technology? So there's a lot of, um, sometimes there's a lot of like hacky kind of solutions to things. Okay. And then obviously as I looked over it, I thought, oh, that's a better way to do it. So I think with more like iterations, it would get cleaner code, faster, better performance. So yeah, so you yeah. get more iteration. Yeah. But uh, overall you're happy. I'm going to project. Okay, one last question, and then we let you go. For the current second year students who are going to do this uh, next year, any yeah. advice you would give to them? The most important piece of advice. Uh, I think it's to enjoy your project. Enjoy your project. Enjoy so choose more. something that you yeah. like. Don't just choose one of the lists. Try and think of something you would choose uh, that you could benefit from. Okay. Okay. Try and apply that to your project. So, so something that might be good with the portfolio, yeah. sort of technology you might yeah. like. Yeah. 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 Great, thank you very much, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Built, and then the top layer gets built, and then that's 
how that algorithm works. The, uh, the algorithm obviously takes more amount of moves, but it allows human solvers to figure out the sequence a lot quicker. The, uh, I did a lot of research on the, the guy who was the second, the second place at the moment. He, uh, his cube that he was given was a distant 17 cube, so it took 17 moves at minimum to solve. He spent, he took 37 moves to do it, and that's all. So yeah, because he used his CFAB algorithm, which he could think of instantly, to create it, but to to figure out the the 17 moves exactly, he used to figure out those different 17, it would take him a lot longer to figure it out. So, so it was less efficient. Yeah. The way it yes, he, it was. It had more moves, but because these record world well, record holders, he could turn, he could do nine turns a second, and that's what he did. He used nine turns a second to do 37. Moves. So yeah. the record was more mechanical in the speed in which you could do the business. Yes. Sufficient way well, when, when you can turn that many, you know, if you can do nine That's turns a second, possible. it doesn't it doesn't really matter that you're adding on an extra one or two turns. Well, in his case, it was an extra like, 20 turns. But it was how quickly you could have thought that out compared to thinking of how long it could have taken to do an optimal Well, I think it transpired as well. Yeah. Ask yeah. Are you enjoyed the project? Absolutely, yes. Um, I, had, I had my brief interest in the previous cubes, I could solve it. But using this, this, um, using this project is great. I was able to do a lot more to research into it. So it's, it's, it's been quite enjoyable. I'm learning a lot more about the cube that I didn't know existed. The mathematics behind one cube is so small. Um, so I keep that so small, but the, math the, math the mathematics behind it is so large. Are you faster than that? I don't think I've improved anything personally because I use a human solving algorithm. The, the implementation was mainly using a machine solving algorithm. It's getting my computer to recognize how I do it, kind of thing. So, you know, my human solving algorithm uses a lot of you know, pattern identification. You know, so, programming that, um, you know, it's usually a lot of those statements and I'll switch statements checking, you know, whether the certain tiles are certain colors. It took a, it's a lot longer to, you know, convert that brain process into implementation. So, Last questions and then the But thinking about the second use, the current second use, I'm going to have to take a project like this, this size anyway, the first one, the third year. What would be the most important piece of advice that you could give? Um, choosing a project is harder than you think. Um, I didn't choose my project to find it. I was struggling to find it really good. It's really important to find a project that you really enjoy, something that you'll actually enjoy doing, otherwise you're going to really struggle with motivating yourself to do it. Okay, so for you, the most important thing is to find something you like, you're interested in. It's, it's, it's your ambition. If, you, if, you, if you're not interested in your project, if you just treat it like another bit of coursework, you're really going to struggle trying to do that with you. Okay, so spend some time actually looking at the project and figuring yes, out make sure you want to do. Try and do a topic that you're genuinely interested in and something that you're uh, like that you know the, the results you're going to be proud of. Brilliant, sounds wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you very much.
size. What would be the one piece of advice that you would give? Um, maybe start doing something. Start doing something. And then keep the work consistent to make sure you get Okay, so try and choose your project early, start early, and get ahead. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Congratulations and good luck. Yeah. 
Friday. So I've got to about um, rage racing and trying to make sure it's as seamless, physically and aesthetically as possible. Well, I think I've got quite well, so this is some of the results I've got. Um, I have to see this one here. I've also created a which tries to represent this scene here. So I have a look at That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. Okay, so if you had to go back and do it all over again, if you had a second chance to do this kind of project, is there anything you would change? Anything you would do differently? To different. Um, well, if I anything, I thought I'm not doing Are you saying with the knowledge I know now? Yes. In hindsight, what would you do differently? Well, now that I know more C++, I made my C++ code there. Um, there's, there are some things I'd like to have added to it, like doing all the shapes of the, of the spheres would be nice. Um, there, there are certain kinds of um, shapes which add on to them, things like triangles or like to do in this kind of range race, I'm only going in one certain direction, so doing bi directional uh, trace from both the light source and the eye around the interest. So basically, if you had more time, you would just add stuff. Yeah, there are lots of other things I find interesting in the trail of light. Fair enough. And, for the people that are going to take this project next year, yeah. project of this size, this guy, are going to be here, your spot, next year. What would be the one piece of advice that you would give? The one thing that you think this is the thing you need to know? Um, it's going to take a lot of time. Like you're going to get errors, it's going to be little math things. Even when you think it's working, it's probably not. So, like, you're going to spend a lot of time looking at something, a uh, thing is working, a thing is not working, and it's, you have to be really minute and all the details. So, plan ahead, allow yourself a bit of time. Yeah. Because, Do not assume that everything is going to work first time. Yeah, because, for example, this scene here was on the laptop. Like, that took forever to get to that stage. And I had a scene that was very similar to that, but the colors weren't quite right. And that was something that was from the very beginning of my program. It took forever to find the error. And for example, the acceleration structure, as it took fruit of the month, easily a month, and this specific type of reflection type, which is a combination of this one and that one together, took forever to combine different things, uh, trying to get the, the light to go through and to bounce. There are lots of different mathematical things to, to combine so, together, which would be very hard. Did you start early? Did you keep a tight schedule? Yeah, I, I started um, pretty, pretty soon, I think. Um, schedule. I'm not sure I would say a schedule. I think um, in terms of where I wanted to be towards the Great Hall and the Royal Hall. Yeah, yeah. so I think when I got to got to like the Great Hall pres presentation, I think I was roughly where I wanted to be. And then towards Easter, I think I was loosely where I wanted to be, but I was, I was kind of very stuck into um, this specific reflection type, for example. So I think I was loosely where I wanted to be. All right, fair enough. Thank you very much. Yeah, Brad.
Okay. So what my project is, is attempting to flag academic misconduct through automation using documents. Oh, okay. Very popular, um, in fact. Very popular, yeah. No one, no one, no one wants to do this nature, but it's fine. Um, so, <laughs> The reason we're using dot plots is because they're currently used quite heavily in bioinformatics for gene sequencing. Okay. Um, specifically for like testing mutations that occur in the in the actual sequence itself, as well as for proteins and nucleotides. Uh, okay. Um, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, but basically, they're used quite heavily for specifically comparing similar things. Okay. But they're not particularly used in computer science, even though there is definitely some potential there because think of it as like a code of the, of the program. It's being so it's you're a Sort of, yeah. Okay. Okay. There's current ways of doing this would be things like um, yeah. tennis and those kinds of things, which are more semantic in how they address things, how they deal with it. So this is not based on text analysis, No, this is more based on Basically, we're trying to mathematically reduce the system into how similar they can be. So, it's probably easier if I go through it rather than... Yeah, yeah, so, we take every file, um, but obviously, we're going to change by like, changing the variable. So we're going to hide it, it's going to reorder things, yeah? So we're going to apply some sort of time to that, so we don't care about that. Okay. Right, we're going to there is a, you assigned a variable to a number. I don't care what the name was, I don't care what the number was, I just care that you did that. Okay. Right? So that's why like all four of these lines have now become the same. Yeah? This is the heavy film. This is the heavy film because it's quite a while. So it's sort of a stem. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm just regarding what changed here. Yeah? So we compare every file to every other file and produce this little box, which you can see if a number is the same as the other number, you've got the box. This is very simple, right? It takes, it takes no time to me. Then we go, well this is a dot plot. What if I just pretended it was a graph? What if I just said it was a a die? Right? Yeah. So basically what we're doing is we're connecting every point that exists to every other point that is down into the right of it. Yeah? So this point is connected to every point, this point is connected to that point, that point, that point, but not this one. Yeah? Yeah, and we use a particular way to for that similarity. So in the dot plot, if you assume that's identical, you get this kind of look. Yeah? Okay. This is like this is the, the file that is listed against itself. So this is what identical is. Okay. Yeah? So we weight each edge in accordance with what would count as, as close to identical. Okay. So if it's here, yeah, then it's zero. If this, if it's uh, to the side, so one. This is like one line of code, and that will put it in the right spot. Okay. Yeah? So we then we have the one thing like that, we give it and then we try to find the minimum traversal. The minimum traversal will then tell us how many lines of code you need to remove to make the two files the same. Okay? So you see that this one is for eight, so I remove eight lines of code, and now I get a reduction that's the same. So that will be pretty simple. Um, in this case, less than you think because of the length of the actual file itself. Oh, okay. so the scoring is done by the, the combined length of the files, okay. minus the amount of lines of code I can move over the combined length of files. Yeah. So if it's zero, then it's, they're exactly the same, it just went straight back. Yeah. So what it also tell me is, say I had two files, and one of my files was 20 lines longer than the other, and then the value I got from this was 20. It tells me that I could remove 20 lines and get exactly back to the original program. So it almost certainly just took my program and just added lines to it, or took my program and deleted some lines. Yeah? You can see, you can see relation to it. Yeah? The score will still be the percentage, but you, you'll be able to mark it that it has that actual thing you can do. Yeah? But there's obviously an easy way to trick this. If I take my one method and I just put it above another, well now, well this would case, if this was just up here, this would now be down there. And now this doesn't work. So that's what this is for. So you accounted for that? This undoes that. So we take every point and we then allocate it for a sector to it. In this example it's 3 by 3. Yeah. So I map a program against itself as our baseline. That's what a program would look like if it is the same. Yeah. For every other file, we do the same thing. We take the same thing and we do another list. If we can create a bijection, that is, if I can compare one thing from every list and one thing from every other list, which is the same, then they are the same program. Okay. Because it, makes sense. it says, um, specifically, it says there exists an arrangement of this program that they are the same. So it's basically like doing a pass with the piece of 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 the
like it's the program it thinks it's least like and the program it thinks it's most like. Okay. Um, this is actually a table from multiple sets of filtering. So I ran it with no filter, so the code just looked like that, and then I did this whole process. Uh, one where I did a hidden, uh, a light filter rather, where I removed all the comments, I got rid of case sensitivity, and I got rid of uh, operation work. So uh, x equals z plus y is the same as x equals uh, y plus z. I didn't care about that. And, that. and then I did that one, and then I got this table from combining all three of those results. So uh, with my so in this case, so this table is that, this table is that, and this one. Okay. Yeah. So then it produces the final rate weighting on everything. And then uh, we can essentially use those weightings to rank them in order from most likely to be cheating to least likely to be cheating. Alright, so then you check the highest score and then yeah. you can do a so, uh, so in this case, E and F are uh, the highest rank. So they'd be what you looked at first. But you can also see the significance based on the statistical data of the arrangements. Okay. So in this case, uh, so we get some statistical data here about the deviation the skew the means. Uh, but in this case, about 28 of this, and they scored at 39, and were the only things to score higher than 33. So it's, it's quite a significant margin there. By so that would like pique your attention? That would pique my attention. Okay, so well, from what it looks like, it's a very interesting project. I, I would hope so, I don't know, because I can't, I don't get to know if people have actually cheated because my data's all anonymized. Well, okay, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Yeah. But say you had a second chance, so you could go back and do it all over again. Yes. Is there anything you would do differently? Um, I would initially look more into uh, other methods for uh, other tools making up plots specifically from the bioinformatics side of it. Okay. Um, just because I looked more, key, more keenly on the compute science usage. But that current usage is actually less similar than the bioinformatics okay. ones. Because the genetic code thing is a lot more alike than I'm trying to optimize code. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so I would do that. So one minute. I've also probably oh. used JPOT for outputs. Okay. So like um, initially I structured it myself, because like, it's just it's just a set of ideas. But then to produce good out visual outputs, I don't currently have, and I would like to have more tools to do so that. So add a visualization for I would have, Yeah. Okay. But it's just the way I built it doesn't lend itself to that. Okay. And so I go back and be more in mind of that. Alright, so second year students, yep. I'm gonna watch this video tomorrow because they're gonna do this. Yep. Hopefully they're gonna watch the beginning of the video. Yeah. And they want some advice. Yeah. So now you made it, you survived. What, what, what kind of advice would you give to someone who's taking a third year project? I would strongly suggest picking a, pro a project that pops out. Okay, I so knew I wanted to do this long before I got to work, okay. so I tried to get it as hard as I could. I even strategically um, <laughs> ranked my choices, so I was more likely to get it. Okay. Um, by picking things that I knew were more popular. So yeah, that's a method to approach yeah. the project. Like, I put this as one, I knew it wouldn't be that popular because no one wants to be the same. <laughs> But I picked things that I knew were very popular, second, third, so that they give me my first choice. If the files are anonymized, the results also could be. So you have, oh, to, yeah, you I'm have not, to be involved. I'm not actually, I'm not part of this. If this happens, then it's not my No, no, you're just they should, for they the should, actual. They shouldn't have cheated, it's not my <laughs> But, okay, so. Yeah. But, like, like, I really wanted to show something. I already started about. working out what I was going to do before I even asked. Also, would you say that maybe, because you basically said if you could go back, you would also look more at the bioinformatics side of it? Yes, and the visualization side, yeah. Would you say spending time on the related work and the research at the beginning? Oh, it's very important, yeah. yeah. It's really important. Like, if I just started this, I would, I would not have thought to do this. I know because this is the most exciting part, you're eager to start. And just yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Don't I, underestimate the research, right? Yeah, no, you should never go. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you very much, and congratulations, man. Good Thank luck you. for the future. Cheers. See ya. Thank you.